my channel. If you're new around here, my name's Tressa and I am a fourth year, fifth grade teacher in Alberta, Canada. I make videos here on YouTube about teaching, learning, and lifestyle. If any of that interests you, I would love to have you consider subscribing and following along. In today's video, we are going to be talking about multiplication charts. One of the most important things in teaching math is to find the best and most efficient strategies that you can give children that allow them to be independent in solving math problems in the classroom or at home. Each year I choose to put name tags on my students' desks that include a multiplication chart. And each year I have students ask me whether or not it is cheating if they're using their multiplication chart. My answer to that is always no, because technically using a multiplication chart is using a strategy that allows a child to be independent. And the goal in math is that children are able to do and solve problems independently. Now, don't get me wrong, you do want a child to eventually learn the basic facts and be able to memorize them and apply them in different scenarios. You don't want to get to the point where a child can't do a multiplication problem without having the multiplication chart there, but it is an excellent starting point and it is especially efficient when you're trying to teach longer multiplication or longer division because that allows them to focus on the method or the strategy that you're teaching for long multiplication or long division and not so much on their basic facts because we really don't want to overload their brains. It just doesn't work that way. So if you're trying to teach a child a new method and they're also trying to think about basic facts, it's going to be really complicated for them to get the hang of the method. So for example, when I'm teaching two digit by two digit multiplication and I'm introducing the area model, I 100% of the time will turn to my multiplication chart to support children in their basic facts. My students who know their basic facts and are able to apply them, great, they don't need a multiplication chart. But if they're still in the beginning stages of memorizing their basic facts, then this is an excellent thing to turn to that allows them a little bit more independence in the math classroom. One of the very best things about a multiplication chart is that it's actually not only applicable to the operation of multiplication. So in today's video, I'm going to give you three different ways that you can use a multiplication chart to support a child's learning at home or in the classroom. I want to start off by reviewing what your average multiplication chart looks like. So typically you would have a multiplication chart that goes up to 12 times 12, which we know by looking right down here. So you're going to have the numbers one through 12 across the top. And you're also going to have the numbers one through 12 down the left hand side. The first way that I'm going to show you how to use a multiplication chart today is the classic or traditional or typical way of using it to solve multiplication problems. The second way that I'm going to show you is to flip flop that a little bit and use your multiplication chart to solve division problems. And the third and final way that I'm going to show you today to use your multiplication chart is working with fractions, more specifically equivalent fractions, as well as simplifying fractions. Now, you may not have a giant poster size multiplication chart in your home available for your child to use, and that's totally fine. You can either print one off of the internet, and they are widely available on the internet, just Google multiplication chart, and you will have a ton of hits pop up, or you and your child could sit down and make your own. I would just highly recommend that if you are going to try making your own, be sure to use a ruler so that your columns and rows line up really well because that's extremely important in that our columns and rows are organized or else we lose some of the visual aspect of the multiplication chart. Something I do want to be sure to note because this is something that comes up in my classroom every single year is using a multiplication chart works as long as you're doing basic facts between the one and 12 times tables. I always have students who look at their multiplication chart, they're looking really carefully and then they say, Miss Lloyd, do you have a multiplication chart that goes up higher than 12? And unfortunately we don't. So just be sure 
to note that as you're moving forward using your multiplication chart, it's only for basic problems going up from the one times tables to the 12 times tables. Now, the way that a multiplication chart is typically used is for basic multiplication facts. So as an example, let's say that we're trying to solve the problem five times six. Then you would ask the child to put their finger on the five across the top and the six down the side. Then the child would slide their fingers until they meet. And that meeting point is the answer to that basic multiplication problem. Let's do a couple more examples. Let's say our multiplication problem is eight times nine. You would have the child put a finger at the eight on the top and the nine down the side. Slowly slide your fingers until they hit that meeting point. In this case, we know that the answer is 72 because our fingers have met on that number. Let's say that we're trying to solve seven times four. The child would put his or her finger at the top on the seven and on the four down the side. Slide your fingers across until they meet. And in this case, our answer is 28 because that is where our fingers have met. Now, to solve for division, it works a little bit differently than multiplication. For division, the number that we would start with is always our bigger number in a division problem. So all of our big numbers are actually the answers to the multiplication problems, but they would be the beginning part of a division problem. So we actually don't start at that point when we're using a multiplication chart for division. So let's say that we have the problem 56 divided by eight. I would tell a child to start at the eight instead of the 56. So put your finger on the top where the eight is and then slide your finger down until you reach that 56. So now we've used our two numbers, 56 divided by eight, but we still haven't figured out the answer. So at this point, I would tell the child to slide their finger across and we get to seven. At that point, the child would know that the answer to 56 divided by eight is seven because th those numbers are all connected on our multiplication chart. Let's try another one. Let's say that the problem was 24 divided by six. So I would have the child put their finger on the six at the top, slide down until they reach the 24, and then slide across to find the answer to that division problem. The answer to 24 divided by six is four because all of those numbers are connected on our multiplication chart. Let's say that the problem that they're trying to solve is 48 divided by six. So once again, they would start at the six at the top scroll their finger down until they reach the 48, then go across and they would find that the answer is eight. So 48 divided by six is eight. To use our multiplication chart for fractions, we're actually going to ignore the numbers across the top and ignore the numbers down the side. And the only numbers that we're going to use are the ones that are inside of our multiplication chart. Now, in this case, we need to start seeing the numbers as fractions. So instead of seeing just a one and a two, I'm going to see the fraction one half. Or over here, instead of seeing just a nine and an 18, I'm going to see the fraction nine over 18. Now, a child can use their multiplication chart for equivalent fractions because when they look across, all of the fractions in this line 
are equivalent. So one half is the same as two fourths, three sixths, four eighths, five tenths, and so on and so forth. To use another example, we could see that six ninths is the same as eight twelfths, 16 24ths, or two thirds. All of the fractions in that line or that row are equivalent. To give a more complicated example, we can go down our chart to seven eighths. Let's go across. This tells us that 49 56 would be the same as seven eighths. So in this case, we can also use it to help children to simplify fractions. So as an example, if there was a problem where they ended up with the answer 49 over 56 or 49 56, that should never be a final answer in a math problem because we should always be working to simplify our fractions. So if they happen to get that answer, they can go across to find out that the simplest way to write that would be 7 8. One of the issues that I run into in my classroom quite often is just the issue of human error with a multiplication chart. So if my student was working on the multiplication problem nine times six, then they can start at the nine and start at the six. They begin in the right place. Their fingers are in the right places. However, I often find that as they start to slide, their fingers end up going in the wrong direction, diagonally one way or the other, and it often ends with a mistake, with the wrong answer to a problem. Same as if we were doing a division problem. Let's say we were working on 45 divided by five. My students could easily put their finger on the five and start to slide down, but their finger may go in the wrong direction one way or another, and it gives them a hard time trying to find that 45. Now, a really simple way to kind of facilitate that and help eliminate that problem is to make sure that the multiplication chart you're using is really organized like this one. The numbers are in very specific columns and rows, and that helps children to keep their fingers going in the right direction. However, there are plenty of other ways to help eliminate this problem, so I'm going to give you some more examples. In my classroom, when I notice that a student is having an issue just using their fingers on a multiplication chart, I will provide them with a multiplication chart in a whiteboard format. So in this case, I'm using a page protector and I will give them a whiteboard marker. Now, if a student is solving eight times seven, I would tell them to start out by circling those two numbers. So circle the eight at the top, circle the seven down the side. Then they need to draw a straight line from each point. Their lines may not be perfect, but as long as they stay in the right column or the right row, then they're doing all right. So at this point, the lines should have met in one place. And that signifies to the student that their answer is where the lines meet. So in this case, the answer is 56. Now, using that strategy, we're still actually leaving a little bit of room for human error. We could have a child circle the proper numbers, but have difficulty drawing that line in the proper direction and end up meeting at an incorrect point. So another strategy that you could use that I have found great success using with my own students, especially the ones who have some difficulties with their fine motor skills. Let's say we're solving five times five. Instead of just having them draw a straight line, I would say, okay, you're gonna start at the five at the top and you're going to count down five spaces. Be sure to check off the spaces as you go. One, two, three, four, five. And if they want to check their work, then they just need to go 
across five as well. One, two, three, four, five. If their points meet properly, that tells them that five times five would equal 25. We can use these exact same strategies for division. So if the division problem that we're working on is 81 divided by nine, I would tell the student to circle the nine at the top and then go down the row in a straight line until they see an 81. When they see the 81, they can circle that number and then go across with a straight line until they find the number that will give their answer. This tells the student that 81 divided by nine is nine. Or if we are solving 42 divided by six, I would tell the student to start at the six and check off the boxes in the row until they see a 42. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So they've actually gotten their answer in this case just by counting, but to be certain they can go across and see that the seven is on the side, which tells them that 42 divided by six is seven. If you're using this multiplication chart for fractions, I would also give my students this in a whiteboard format in a page protector or a Ziploc bag with a whiteboard marker and just allow them to draw the fractions right onto the sheet so that they're able to visualize them a little bit better. So if they're working with the fraction 9 twelfths, for example, they can draw over that line and really see that it's 9 over 12. Another thing that I have seen helpful for students is to be able to draw a box around the fraction. So if they're working with 6 eighths, drawing a box around the fraction to really bring the focus into that fraction is helpful for a lot of visual learners. For fractions, another thing that can be helpful is to outline the row that they should be looking in. So if you're asking your students to find a fraction that is equivalent to four fifths, you could tell the student, or you could even do this for them, if you see fit, to highlight the row that they're looking in. And that way they know that their numbers are not in here and not in here, and it really brings their focus into this row so they can start looking for the fraction that will give them the right answer. So I have taken the multiplication chart that I allow my students to use in the classroom. This is one that I just printed off of the internet straight from Google. Um, I always print off ones that do not include the zeros. So my multiplication charts are always 1 through 12 across the top, 1 through 12 across this side. The reason that I don't include the zeros is because when my students are counting down the rows, if they're trying to do 6 times 7, then their first number that they're actually counting is 0, and it messes up their counting after that. So I highly recommend just eliminating the zeros and printing off a multiplication chart for the 1 through 12 times tables. Now, to make this strategy a little bit more interactive, I highly recommend you provide your child with their multiplication chart in a whiteboard format. Now, the best way to do this is just to do it yourself at home. So there are a couple different ways that I have found success in using this that I'm going to share with you. The first thing that you can do is buy one of these at the Dollar Tree. It is just a bit of a fancier page protector, but it has a pouch that you can slide your multiplication chart into so that your child can write on the outside and wipe it off and it acts as a whiteboard. So your child can just slide the multiplication chart right in there and then they're capable of writing on this, wiping it off. It's totally reusable and a pretty cheap solution to having a multiplication chart at home. The second thing that you could do is use a page protector. Um, once again, these kind of have a little pocket that you can put sheets into. They wipe off really easily and they can last a long time as a reusable whiteboard. So they end up looking like this. I use these in my classroom all the time because it ends up being about 10 cents, I think, per whiteboard 
because you can buy these in huge packs and then slide any sheets into them and they work as practice pages for your child. I know if my students are watching this, they're probably laughing because we have a ton of these around the classroom. We use them all the time. The third thing that you can do to make a whiteboard at home is to use a freezer size Ziploc bag. A lot of us have these in our home. They're totally accessible and also another inexpensive way to make your own whiteboard at home. So all you have to do for this is slide your multiplication chart inside the Ziploc baggie and then your child is able to write on there, draw on there, and solve math problems just using a Ziploc baggie, an item that you already have around your home. The last step for this is to just make sure that your child has access to whiteboard markers. I highly recommend the thin tipped one or the fine tipped ones for this activity, just because the numbers on the multiplication chart that you print off the internet are usually quite small. So using the fine tip just allows it to be a little bit neater when they're working through their math problems. There you have it. Three ways that you can use a multiplication chart at home or in the classroom to support your child's learning. If you enjoyed today's video, please give it a thumbs up because it really supports my channel. And don't forget to hit that red subscribe button so you don't miss out on any future videos. Thank you for joining me today and I'll see you next time. Bye.